Hey Dave, this is Dark Souls. This is Dark Souls Remastered. The game originally came out in 2011. Uh, it is available for PC. Uh, the remastered version does not upgrade the graphics so much as it improved the frame rate of the game and it also made the user interface a lot easier. Um, the game is a sort of medieval dark fantasy setting. So starting out, uh, your choice of character is basically from that kind of genre where we've got these warriors, knights, thieves, sorcerers. Uh, and you'll notice that the stats on the left hand side are changing pretty dramatically with each class that I cycle through. The first time that you play the game, uh, you will have a wildly different experience based on which class you start with, because you start with different weapons, you start with different abilities. I'm going to play as this guy, and uh, I'm going to make him pretty distinct. This is like the fourth or fifth character I've made in this game, so I kind of want him to stand out from the other characters I've made. So soft boy. The Deprived are kind of well-rounded with their stats. They're not particularly good at anything, but they're not really awful at anything either. As I play through the game, his stats will change. He'll, they'll go up and uh, it'll, it'll still be a completely different experience. So I'm just going to let the intro play right after I hit this button. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Wind's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath the scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, 
there are only embers. A man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. And that is the most story you're going to get in any one place. A lot of the information for this game is hidden and obscure. So it's very rare to get an information dump yes, like that. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. Lovely. This is your fate. Yeah, soft boy's not looking too good there. And the rats are undead. Soft boy is looking more like jerky boy. I did say this game was dark. So, regardless of what class I might have picked, every character starts in this cell with no armor, no weapons, except for this uh, straight sword hilt, which really doesn't do a lot of damage. You can tell it's a, it's a broken sword. Um, this guy drops this dead hollow into the cell, and it happens to have a key, which will let us out. Now... That whole intro is is pretty much the most story you're going to get in any one place. Uh, the rest of the story in the game is told by characters uh, that have very brief interactions with you. Whenever you pick up an item, uh, sometimes there is lore that can be read about the item. For instance, when I look at the sword hilt here, uh, the hilt of this lost sword was found discarded in the Undead Asylum only slightly better than one's bare hands. So this is, there's no lore here. There's nothing special about this thing. And that's pretty much the case for most of the equipment you find early on, but as you progress through the game, a lot of things have little pieces of information that kind of wrap the story together. So it's all very kind of opaque. Like, y you have to discover the story. Otherwise, it's just you, this undead guy, uh, running through the world. Uh, little, little uh, thing I'm going to say about this is uh, I am playing online uh, so these orange messages sometimes are left by players uh, but here these are developer messages this level is kind of a tutorial I'm not going to read all of them but I just wanted to show that this is an example of a developer message camera controls used with the right stick these are player messages ooh imminent fatty uh, how appropriate uh, rating 89, that lets you know that this is a player message. Somebody wrote this here. Because player messages can be rated. You can either give them a plus one or a minus one. Which uh, is kind of a way of denoting whether or not it's a good message or not. Um, because uh, some messages are bad. Sometimes players deliberately leave messages behind to trick you, to try to get you killed. Uh, that's just the nature of Dark Souls. That's the way it works. There's there's literally almost no tutorial. Uh, there's there's the orange messages, and there are sometimes these blood stains, which when you touch them, will show how another player died. And uh, yeah, that guy got stabbed in the gut. It looks like. Now I'm gonna kill this guy. 
And I want to show you something first. When I swing my weapon, it bounces off the wall. Because everything about this game is very exact and very deliberate. You have to know how your weapons work when you fight somebody. And sometimes the only way to learn how a weapon works is to actually use it. So... That took a lot to kill him. <clears throat> the, uh, the game is very punishing, I would say. Uh, it has a reputation for being very difficult because you have to know how it, how it works. You have to know how the enemies fight. You have to know what your character is capable of. And you have to know how the weapons you're using are going to interact with the world. So when I swing, I make a big wide swing like that. I can two-hand the weapon, and I still make a huge wide swing. Uh, this guy... I'm, just, I'm, I'm like standing right next to him, and I'm not hitting him. You know? I make mistakes. I can punch him. Hit him again. So that number in the lower right-hand corner of the screen is the souls I'm collecting. Each time I kill one of these guys, I get 20 souls. And uh, this guy, uh, he seems kind of pathetic, just hanging out in this water. I don't know who he can be. There's only one way to go. Up and out. So there's also no map. You'll notice that there's no mini-map on the screen, and I can't look up a map. All of these choices here are uh, browse and use items, change my equipment, view my stats, configure the game. Um, there's no map, and you have to rely on the environment and exploring the environment to know where you are. And I can safely say that each environment is totally distinct. Uh, I can just look at a wall and immediately know exactly where I am in the game. Uh, it does not open from this side. We'll be coming back to that later. I do apologize for the length of this video. I wanted to go through this tutorial. I know it's going to take at least a half an hour. Um, bonfires are basically the save points of the game. There's no options here yet, but as you progress through the game, more and more options show up, and eventually that whole screen fills up with a list of things to do. Um... Part of there not being any maps is that there are lots of secret passages. There are lots of uh, little obscure paths that take you to and from places. Uh, and this first area, I'm going to read this developer message. Get away! This is our first boss fight. And yes, he looks terrifying. Looks like I'm not going to be able to beat him. And, and if you look... I'm only doing two points of damage uh, on his health meter. It would take about 800 hits to kill this guy. And uh, I'm not going to fight him. I'm actually I'm going to let him kill me. Because I want you to see what happens when you die in this game. I'm surprised it's actually taking this long. He's had three times. Hey, kill me! There we go. Flattened. So when you die, you go back to the last bonfire that you rested at. Not the last bonfire you lit, but the last one you rested at. Uh, that's an important distinction to make, because if I had just lit that and not sat at it, I would have started back at the cell. Um, so you'll notice in the lower right hand corner, I don't have any of my souls. If I die again, without picking them up, I will lose them forever. But every time you die, you leave behind any souls you were carrying. So you always have a chance to go back and get them. Um, I made a gesture on accident. I'm playing on a PlayStation 4. And there's a six-axis control within the controller. You're actually supposed to move uh, this way. The six-axis controller kind of senses the movement of the controller, and it sometimes does gestures like that. It's annoying because you can't interrupt the gesture. <clears throat> so this game has a reputation for being very difficult. 
Um, there is only one difficulty. You cannot alter it. So I have just picked up the shield that we saw during character creation. And... Oh, he's going to run away. I was hoping I could block one of his arrows. And on this corpse, we're going to find our club that we had during character creation. And you'll see the straight sword hilt has attack power 20, the club has attack 87, so already improving. Now I'm pretty much the character that I made, except that I'm dead and I look like something is growing on me. Death. <coughs> Excuse me. So, there's only one difficulty. The, what I was saying before is that uh, finishing the game is kind of a badge of honor. Because it is sort of like a fantasy role-playing game. Because you have these stats. Uh, you have a level, upper left-hand corner, level 6. Uh, as you gain levels, your stats go up. You become more powerful. Um, I can pick up better equipment later in the game. More powerful equipment. So I can become more powerful with the, the weapons that I wield and the armor that I will eventually wear. But the real way to progress through this game is through your personal experience. And not just exploring the game. See, that's the knight who gave us the key from earlier. Uh, not just exploring the game, but also fighting the creatures in it. And um, learning what the game has in store for you. Every boss, I feel, has a lesson to be learned. The game sort of teaches you how to play by punishing you and doing things that you would not, uh, you wouldn't expect a game to do. You know, like a lot of times it sets you up for failure in order to teach you a lesson. Um, and if you come through those lessons without dying and without losing your souls, then it's so much more gratifying. Um, that was a trap. The game is filled with traps, but this particular trap opens this wall. And now, we can talk to the guy who gave us that key. Do we want to talk to him? Ah, uh, yes, I'll talk to him. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Oh, I... Yeah, I, I came over here to talk to you, so yeah, of course. What do you have to say? Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Wow, oh, this guy is just filled with keys. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. With so many keys, it's a wonder how he got trapped in this room. Okay, so the Estus Flask is probably the most important piece of equipment you'll ever pick up. Because you'll notice I took damage. In the upper left-hand corner, my health is depleted a little bit from that trap. So I'm going to heal that up to full. And every time I rest at a bonfire, my Estus Flask will refill. <coughs> Excuse me. I should have had a glass of water before I did this. Um, so, yeah, the personal experience that you have through this game teaches you a lot more about the game than anything else that you could, could do. Uh, you know, it, it is... A pretty old game came out in 2011, which means that there's a lot of walkthroughs and guides and help that you can find online. 
the the real challenge of this game though is to do it yourself um that is a backstab i didn't know if i was going to get one or not um every time you roll uh you're slightly invisible or invisible invincible excuse me okay i'm gonna try and pull off one of my favorite maneuvers not that that. Parry repost. That is so gratifying. I mean, you can feel the weight of your weapon when you kill those guys like that. Uh, this door is locked. The key that he gave us does not open that, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Success in this game pretty much comes from learning it and uh, doing it. And it's not only gratifying, it's an incredible relief once you actually finally do kill something. Fight that asylum demon again. Look at that. I've already done almost half of its health with one hit. And you have to hit demons in the butt because that is the most sensitive part of their body. Look at that. It didn't even hit me. Oh, it's so gratifying. Feels so good. <laughs> there was a time when, uh, the very first time I played this game, I don't know how many times I died against that guy, but I just got killed and killed and killed, and it was so frustrating. I think it took me maybe 45 minutes just to get past that guy. So he drops the big pilgrim's key and some humanity. Uh, humanity I'm not really going to go into. Um, I'm not going to explain that at all, but uh, I just wanted to look at the big pilgrim's key really quick. Uh, key to the inner door of the uh, undead asylum. This chosen undead knows not what this pilgrimage has in store. Actually, I thought that was going to say something else, but I guess not. Um, as I said before, items have little lore descriptions that you can read, and sometimes they tell you about the world, sometimes they don't. Um, the last thing I'm going to say before we leave this area is uh, I just want to look back at the asylum. Everything that you see is someplace that can be explored. Uh, it's a place you can go to. Uh, it's a, a place that you can be within grasp of. You know, like you could all these any floor area that you see is like an area that can be walked to for the most part obviously those mountains you can't walk to but one of the beautiful things about this game is that if you can see a building in the distance you can probably get to it uh, there there is a path that will lead to, you lead you there even if uh, you don't know immediately where it is um, so there's one more cutscene here I'm gonna let it play Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. You know, one does wonder about that guy's family. Like, whose family has a saying of just like, uh, In thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of lords. Like, who goes around saying that at dinner? Or, you know, on holidays or something like that. That's just a weird thing to... There's an old saying in my family. If you're undead, you are chosen. Okay, Dad. Um, what's for dinner? Firelink Shrine. This is kind of the main hub of the game. There are four paths that lead out of this area. And each path kind of splits... Uh, and goes off somewhere else. So there's actually eight different places you can go to from Firelink Shrine. 
Uh, not all of them are accessible right away. Part of exploring the world is finding those paths. So I'm going to use this humanity. You see that number in the upper left-hand corner go up? Uh, I'm going to pick up this little glowing sphere. More humanity! And we can level up at the bonfires. So already we're getting more options with the bonfire. Uh, I'm going to increase my strength. Oh, look at that. Two points away from being able to level up a third time. I'm going to use my humanity at the bonfire to reverse my hollowed state. And there, soft boy is re restored to being human. Uh, so I have one last thing to say about the game. The multiplayer is completely optional. Yes, I am currently playing online, so that means, hey, these little player messages have shown up. We might see some, uh, hey, there, I was just about to say, we might see some other players. This guy resting at a bonfire. Oh, there's another guy resting at the bonfire. Might see some bloodstains. Probably not, though. Oh, there's one. Somebody probably jumped off the cliff or did something. I'm not going to follow him. Uh, all of that happens, um, I think regardless of uh, whether or not, yeah, regardless of whether or not you are in your human state or your hollow state. But in the human state, that's when you can summon other players to play with you uh, in co-op, or you can be invaded by other players. So it's a completely opt-in experience. You don't ever have to become human. Uh, you don't have to restore your humanity throughout the entire game. Or you can play offline. You don't have to interact with anybody. I think the game is a lot more rewarding when you play it with other people. Um, my first playthrough of the game, there were a couple of bosses that I could not defeat on my own, or I thought that I couldn't defeat them, because I just hadn't hadn't really fought them well enough, and I maybe was too impatient to just uh, die 15 more times against them to learn their moves. Um, but, you know, Playing co-op means that you can potentially be invaded by other players, and being invaded is no fun because you have to fight someone, they're basically going to slow your progress. They're not going to take anything from you, but they will slow you down, and uh, if you get killed, you do leave behind your souls like you would if you got killed by a regular creature within the world. Uh, so I'm going to talk to this guy, and then I'm going to log off. We have here. You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. Huh. Too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happens. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> I forget what that guy's name is, but he's like the depressed knight or the malcontent knight. Um, he's he's tons of fun. Everything he has to say is super jubilant and happy. Uh, so what do we know? We know that the age of fire is ending and the age of dark is upon us. Uh, as the age of dark is upon us, people are coming back from the dead. They're branded by the dark sign and they are forced to be undead. Mindless hollows who... Uh, attack the living. So the undead are corralled in the un uh, undead asylum. What do we know from Oscar? That there's a saying from his family of all places that uh, a chosen undead will find its way out of the asylum to, to ring the bell of awakening in a far off land. And now we've just learned from this malcontent knight that there are actually two bells of awakening. One in the Undead Church, and one in Blighttown. And that's our quest. That's how Dark Souls starts.
and uh, that's pretty much the premise of the game. You're not going to get more story than that. Oh, that little thing, uh, somebody kindled that flame, so it increased my Estus Flask. Uh, you'll notice my Estus Flask went up to 10 when I rested at this bonfire. That's uh, because this is a kindled bonfire for us as well, uh, but it can be kindled more, I guess. Uh, that's that's a whole nother topic that is uh, part of the complexity of the game. Uh, let me know if you want to know more. I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to the game. And, uh, oh, that was the wrong button. And if you do want more, maybe we'll see some more of Softboy.